documents increased left ventricular stroke volume and decreased left ventricular end diastolic pressure. What effects do these hemodynamic changes have on functional recovery? This is the chest x-ray of a 22-year-old young man with apical and midventricular hypertrophic cardiomyopathy who had class 4 disability and was told that his symptoms did not respond to medical treatment and thus his only alternative was cardiac transplantation. As can be seen in the preoperative echocardiogram, there's a very small left ventricular chamber. In the panel, in the upper left, the long axis, it appears that the functioning ventricle extends only to the midpoint of the papillary muscles. In the image on the right, the four-chamber projection, the distal ventricle is only a slit. And this is confirmed on the cross-section at the bottom. The patient is an aspiring musician, and his disability was frustrating to him and all in his family. After hearing that surgery might be helpful to him, his mother wrote, we believe if Justin's quality of life improves to the point where he can regain some mobility and spend a few hours of the day out of bed, the surgery can be counted as a success. And here's the postoperative echocardiogram showing an almost normal size left ventricle. You can see that the cavity is enlarged in the upper left. It's apparent in the long axis, the four chamber, and the cross-sectional view at the bottom. More importantly, postoperatively, his stroke volume was measured at about 70 mLs per beat, almost normal for someone his size. And this change in diastolic stroke volume has had a profound impact on his functional capacity. The next slide shows the patient playing in his band 11 months after operation. Now, uh, Justin gave us permission to tell his story, and the only stipulation was that we plug his band extractus and tell anyone in the Philadelphia area that's looking to book a heavy metal group that Justin and the band can be found on YouTube. 